This film is brought to you by New York Life and its dedicated agents. Proud sponsors of the NFL's team highlight films. New York Life, the company you keep. As the Tampa Bay Buccaneers began the 1989 season, head coach Ray Perkins was looking for improvement from a young team that needed positive experiences in order to realize how good they could be. One of the things we need to do early is to win a game against a really good football team. And the other thing that I would like to see us do is fairly early is to pull one out in the last minute. And if you can do it early in the season, that gives you some momentum and some confidence factor for your team that can uh, give you a real boost and have a great year. On opening day, Perkins got his wish as the Bucks outdueled the revitalized Green Bay Packers in a game that wasn't decided until the end. Defensive lineman Reuben Davis and Ray Seal sacked Packers quarterback Don Mikowski twice and defensive backs Mark Robinson and Harry Hamilton intercepted three of his passes. On offense, the tone was set by quarterback Vinny Testaverde. Vinny has hit seven different receivers, ready to work on first down. Cocks the arm, gets the pass away, caught by William Howard, dives, touchdown Tampa Bay! Testaverde completed 81% of his passes to win the NFC Player of the Week honors. And Lars Tate, number 34, scored twice. Tate's got the corner. He's to the two, to the one. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The Bucks ran up a 20-7 halftime lead, then had the strength to win it at the end by keeping their heads. A 52-yard field goal by place kicker Donald Ikwebuike proved to be the deciding points in a hard-fought 23-21 opening day victory. With the world champion 49ers up next, this win was an important lesson for a young team that was willing to fight to the finish. Men who were proud to say, we're Buccaneers. In week two, against the defending world champion 49ers, the Bucks showed how good they could be. Nose tackle Kurt Jarvis and linebackers Kevin Murphy and Winston Moss, number 58, sacked Joe Montana four times, while the rest of the Bucks defense held Roger Craig and the 49ers running game to just 63 yards. Montana was pressured into two interceptions, both by cornerback Ricky Reynolds, number 29. But it was the strength of the team that kept the game close in the fourth quarter and kept the world champions within sight. The Bucks need to hold them right here. They can give up the field goal, but they don't want to give up the touchdown. 14 and a half minutes to go in the game. 49ers have it first down and goal for the one. And a handoff to Craig. Craig loses the football. Pile up. There's a big pile up at the goal line. Got it. The Bucs. The Buccaneers force the turnover at the one. You know, sometimes you make your own luck, and there's a perfect example of that. Trailing 13 to 9, the Bucks offense took advantage of their good fortune as they mounted a fourth quarter drive against the best team in pro football. And Benny wants to go airborne. Into the pocket, throws it downfield, intended for, batted away. Hit. Oh! Caught. Caught. You get a feeling that someone wants the Bucks to win this game. I got a good idea, too. 64,000 of them sitting here, Al. You Not bet. Many have left, if any have. Third down, four for the Buccaneers at the 18-yard line. Chester Verde with a one pump. Goes toward the far corner. He's open. Touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Buccaneers lead with 325 to go. Gaining a 16-13 lead against the 49ers confirmed that this team had character. However, the lesson that the Bucks were destined to learn was that you never give a quarterback like Joe Montana two chances to beat you. First and goal from the five-yard line. 
for the 49ers with 46 seconds to go. Montana bootlegs, rolls toward his right. He's going to pump and take it in himself. Touchdown, 49ers with 40 seconds to go. Joe Montana does it again. The disappointment of the 20 to 16 loss was lessened by the encouragement that came from standing toe to toe with the NFL's best team. And the next week, the Buccaneers bounced right back against another playoff contender, the New Orleans Saints. Interceptions by safeties Mark Robinson and Harry Hamilton, along with a punishing defense, kept the Saints offense stuck in reverse. Number 59, Kevin Murphy led a sack attack that dropped Saints passers three times. The defense was aggressive, while the offense was steady as a rock. Chester Verde drops back. Touchdown. Gets the pass away on the post. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Ron Hall. And the Buccaneers take the lead for the first time. And the Saints have nine at the line of scrimmage. Daring them to run. Lars Tate takes the call. Goes outside. Step by one. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The Bucks' 20-10 victory over the Saints was another step forward for a young and improving team. After a disappointing loss in Minnesota, the Bucks returned home to meet a team they'd failed to beat in their last 12 meetings, the Chicago Bears. Chicago was unbeaten. Still, on this sun-drenched Sunday in Tampa Stadium, the Bucks were determined to prove they were the better team. Looks toward his left, fires left, and it's incomplete. Now it's caught, touchdown, Tampa Bay. Through the hands of one receiver, and Mark Carrier pulls it in. Unbelievable catch. Good stretch, the toss sweep goes to Tate. Looks for a hole, Tate through the hole to the 10, to the 5, he scores a Buccaneer touchdown. The Bucks' offense was on the way to its biggest point production of 1989 while the defense cranked out timely big hits that resulted in game-breaking turnovers. Tight! 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 Let's take it back, D! Let's go! Kevin Murphy shook loose one fumble that Reuben Davis recovered, and Mark Robinson intercepted a pass that eventually led to a Buccaneers touchdown. This time he gets rid of it, and the ball is picked up! Intercepted by Robinson. Mark Robinson stands. The Bucks surged ahead 21 to nothing, led by a blistering all-purpose performance by their quarterback. with a play fake. Looks toward his left. Fires. Catch. Touchdown. Tampa Bay. William Harris, the tight end. And Vinny hit him with a rifle shot. Vinny with a moderate drop. Throws across the middle. Caught at the three. Touchdown. Bruce Hill. He was hit. Kept his balance and backpedaled into the end zone. Buccaneers get six more. Lars Tate ran for a career high 112 yards and his second touchdown finalized Tampa Bay's thrilling 42 to 35 shootout over Chicago. It was a stunning confirmation of the improvements that this team has made since Ray Perkins assumed command in 1987. While the first five weeks proved how far the team had come, the rest of the season showed it still had a ways to go. A heartbreaking last play loss to Detroit triggered a string of defeats that tested the character of the NFL's youngest team. A 
A few games seemed to slip away early, but most were competitive and hard fought right down to the finish. A block punt, returned for a touchdown by number 29, Ricky Reynolds, wasn't quite enough as the Bucks fell short in a comeback bid against Washington. In Houston, Testaverde led a stirring comeback against the Oilers, only to see it disappear on a last minute fumble. But the most frustrating loss may have been a rematch with the playoff contending Green Bay Packers. Sylvester Stamp scored a touchdown, and Tampa Bay led until a fourth down penalty gave the Packers the chance to win it with one second remaining. While Tampa Bay's losses were heartbreaking, its victories were exhilarating. Take the Bucks' Week 11 rematch in Chicago, for example. There was no fooling the Bucks' defense early as they hounded and pounded the Bears and even scored a touchdown. And Harbaugh will take a straight drop and try to throw, gets rid of the ball. It's intercepted! He's intercepted by the Buccaneers! Yeah. Reuben Davis takes it in from the 10. Special teamers Chris Moore, number five, the all-rookie punter. Unit MVP Sam Ono, number 56. Jackie Walker, Odie Harris, and number 57, Pete Najarian, provided the Bucks offense with excellent field position. <music> Lars Tate carried one touchdown in, while Vinny airmailed another. From the 22, Testaverde looks left, now looks toward his left, throws it downfield, intended for Carrier. He's, He's got it. Head to the 45. Carrier He's in gone. Bounds. He's gone. Out of the 30, to the 20. Mark Carrier's going to score a Buccaneer touchdown, a 78-yard pass completion from Vinny Testaverde to Mark Carrier. When Chicago stormed back to take a 31-29 lead, Tampa Bay needed a dramatic drive in the final minute 46. Testaverde confidently directed the Bucks downfield. And after clutch catches by Carrier and rookie Danny Peebles, number 83, Tampa Bay was within range of victory, just in the nick of time. Two seconds remain in the game. Here's the hole, the kick by Iggy Airborne. It is good! Go the Buccaneers! Yeah, do it! Beat two the in a Bears! 32 to 31, Tampa Bay will head home with a precious victory under their belts. And they had to come from behind to do it. It was this fight to the finish attitude that was the most encouraging aspect of last season. And Tampa Bay's last minute confidence was evident the following Sunday in Phoenix. Once again, the game would be decided at the end. The pressure of fourth down when everything is on the line is what makes quarterbacks great. And it was here that Vinny Testaverde responded to the challenge. Twice, number 14 delivered clutch fourth down completions while directing the Bucks to another thrilling victory. Eighty-two yards, and fourteen plays later, Testaverde made the winning play when it mattered the most. From the five, Randy Grimes directing the offensive line. Here's the pass, far corner of the end zone, cut, touchdown, Buccaneers, Carrier. And the pass was right over the shoulder of Carrier, touchdown, Buccaneers. In 1989, Vinny Testaverde played on a level that kept the Bucs in most of their games until the last minute and his ability to lead and play his best when everything is at stake could be the difference as Tampa Bay continues to improve.
A stronger defense will be a top priority in 1990 for the Buccaneers. And it will be a blend of proven veterans and talented young players who must provide the muscle to implement the attack. Tampa Bay can count on linebackers like Irvin Randall, number 54, the leading tackler in 1989, and Kevin Murphy, the leading sacker. Eugene Marv, Winston Moss, and 1989's number one draft pick, Roderick Thomas, number 51, give this team a formidable core of big play linebackers. The leaders in the secondary are safeties, Harry Hamilton, number 39, and the hard-hitting Mark Robinson, number 30. I always look at that as my strength, as you know, I've been known throughout my career, just for my hitting ability. And I like to build on that, and I like to also add to the other areas of my game plan as well, where I can help the team the most. Whether it was crunching a quarterback on a safety blitz or intercepting him, Robinson was a passer's worst nightmare. His six interceptions were matched by Hamilton, another multi-dimensional defender. This dynamic duo drew secondary support from Rod Jones, Bobby Futrell, and cornerback Ricky Reynolds, number 29, who was one of the best at coverage and one of the surest tacklers in football. Defensive lineman Reuben Davis, Kurt Jarvis, Sean Lee, Robert Goff, and John Cannon round out a defensive wrecking crew whose strength was in numbers. Hitting together not only creates turnovers, it turns games around. And in order for the Bucks to continue to show improvement, the defense must create and the offense must take advantage of the opportunity. 76, down on two, ready? Offensively, Ray Perkins has been collecting a cast of talented players that begins with his quarterback. Vinny Testaverde is maturing into an outstanding field general with the help of his offensive line. This wall consists of Randy Grimes, number 60, Tom McHale, Carl Bax, Harry Swain, Don Graham, John Bruin, and Paul Gruber, number 74, an offensive tackle who has the talent and attitude to be all pro. Every time you line up and snap the ball, it's another battle, and I want to win all of them. And so that's what I try to do when I go into a game, is uh, play a perfect game. Gruber and the rest hold the key, because pass protection enables one of the strongest arms in football to get the ball into the hands of talented receivers like Danny Peebles, Bruce Hill, Ron Hall, Willie Drury, Frank Pillow, and the one receiver who literally leaped out of the pack in 1989, Mark Carrier, number 88. Frequently spectacular, Carrier caught nearly every catchable pass that Vinny and backup quarterback Joe Ferguson fired in his direction. I think my biggest strength is concentration. I think last year I've been catching the ball more. Also, my cutting ability. I've been working uh, this past offseason and getting quicker to be able to do more things, but I think my cutting ability and, and concentration on the ball, I think, are the two main factors. Number 88 put the thrill back in the run after the catch. By season's end, this elusive wide receiver owned or shared team records with 1,422 yards on 86 receptions for nine sometimes unbelievable touchdowns. Ferguson out of the shotgun's gonna put it up. Big Ben right, no, he throws it across the middle. Carrier's got the short route to the 50. Carrier to the far side, to the 40. Carrier to the 35, to the 30. Carrier down the sideline. Carrier's gonna go. What a play! A touchdown! Is that incredible? Incredible might be the only way to describe this shifty yet sure-handed third-year wide receiver who will help the Bucs to fight to the finish for many years to come. Near side, looking toward his left, goes toward the end zone. Carrier goes to the end, oh, makes the oh, touch, touchdown Tampa Bay, and Carrier does it again. He did it again. Did it again.
as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers boldly set sail into the decade of the 90s. It is an improving and determined team. Talented athletes who are proud to say, we're Buccaneers. Touchdown! 